Hey, surprise. Sunday afternoon surprise stream. Um, I, I won't be here forever. Uh, ooh, that's more metaphorical than I meant it to be. I just meant uh, I have a bunch of stuff to do this afternoon, but, you know, it's been a week. I didn't get to do a Monday chat, uh, and I haven't put out a Friday audio show. So I thought I would pop in for a second to look at one of the questions on the uh, cue sheet here and see if I had any uh, insider info. So let me see. Uh, also, okay, this one was about sort of starving artist mentality. Um, let me get the exact question. All right, again, there's a couple of related ones. So the first one was, how do I break the curse of the starving artist mentality? Okay, maybe you're not familiar with that. Um, and if you're not, let's just, let's just pretend, right? Uh, if you are, let's just pretend that you, you don't know what that is. Um, there is a, uh, an overly romanticized idea in popular culture, and it's been around for a long time, of the starving artist. Related tropes would be the tortured artist, the depressed, the melancholy artist, the struggling artist. Um, a lot of media popularizes, romanticizes, creates this character for an audience um, that teaches an audience that an artist is always supposed to have some sort of intense struggle or difficulty, um, and, and they're nobly pursuing their art anyway. And that attached to that is the idea that if you're not struggling, you're not a real artist, or if you're not somehow tortured or enduring pain um, in the pursuit of your craft, you're not a real artist. And so you get starving artist, right? Melancholy artist, hungry artist, whatever. But isn't that maybe more of a consequence of whatever whatever truths give rise to the pillars of this fictional starving artist metaphor? Um, wouldn't those truths be related to sort of a lot of difficulties in getting paid for a living to pursue art and society's uh, ideas and value of art, right? Because the flip side of that is, oh, this person is a sellout. This person is uh, successful in making money at what they're doing, so they're a total sellout, right? Where everyone who's uh, on TV is making a ton of money, right? Not true, right? Um... And when they achieve success, they lose their creative edge, right? So a lot of artists will, which I don't believe. Um, maybe it's just that they go and they have a life suddenly because they have the resources to have a proper life if they find success. Anyway, it can be really difficult and troubling in, for a, um, an artist who wants to create things in theory to connect with an audience, right? Um, so in theory, wants success. And in order to, to continue creating things, they need financial resources just because the way the world is to live, to keep doing that, right? So ultimately, um, you, you would want to be successful. And whether that's like having a day job so that you can uh, use that to fund what you need to create, you know, your art, um, then you're not a starving artist in that way. And I would hope that you're not. So I'm a little off track, but let me get back to there. The romanticization of, I need to be struggling to be a, a real artist or successful artist is poison. It's absolute poison. Um, you, you, you don't. In, in fact, while there are pressures in life, that I think help us focus to create something great. Look at 
Springsteen's Born to Run, right? The pressures that were there. The, there's a dark side to those pressures where they go too far and they rob you of your personal resources and ability to have the energy to keep creating or, or to create something that's, that's good, right? Because you've got to, um, I don't know, satisfy a client or a patron or, uh, or whatever, but you need to find a way out of being a starving artist. And that may start with allowing yourself and this will sound weird if you don't know what what I'm talking about this may sound weird but but allowing yourself giving yourself the permission to say it's okay if I make money at this it's okay if I'm like good at this it's okay if uh I succeed at this that's not going to diminish what I create if anything it's going to give me the tools I need to create more stuff so if someone wants to who doesn't get it wants to like call you a sellout, right? Um, chances are they either, either if they were an artist, they gave up. And so now they're just kind of name calling you at a thing that they couldn't do. Um, or if their taste and your art has changed because your art has changed as you've gone from struggling to successful. And so now you're making different stuff than you used to make and you lose that audience member. That's fine. Right. It doesn't take away the stuff that you used to make. Um, but at the end of the day, it's your life, and you deserve to not live a miserable life. So if you're able to find the means through day jobs, through successful artistic projects, whatever, if you're able to find the means to keep making the stuff that matters to you, um, and you, f- you found funding for that, again, either you know, you're know you doing a day job so that you can make your stuff in your spare time or you've had successful projects that lets you make more successful projects, whatever it is, that's okay. You, you, you can do that. Um, and uh, I wish everyone success. Like there's a, an idea in, and not to pick on theater cause I come from theater, but there is an idea in theater. There is a culture in theater and in nonprofits. Um, and I love nonprofits, but there is a culture sometimes um, of, well, we're small and scrappy and we're making do with absolutely nothing. And how noble is that? And everyone here is, is uh, volunteering. Uh, and, but we're all pursuing something, you know, uh, noble. And there's a lot of that that can be true. And then there's some of that that can be used to uh, kind of oppress uh, you as an employee or a volunteer or whatever. You know, if you want to go and there's a nonprofit that you love and you want to give your time to like making that a thing, that's fantastic. Uh, If you get really good at that, sometimes you may end up on staff (laughs) and that's cool. Um, But if, if you find that the resources coming into an organization aren't matching up with, uh, the hours and the work and the ability to um, have the people that are directly contributing to that organization's success uh, make a living, you know, you might want to reevaluate that. Anyway, um, so in film, which is also like wonderful and awful in its own way, um, you know, there's a different sort of all kinds of predatory stuff in film. Um, but there is a little more of an idea that culture wise, like, Hey, we're all here to make money, um, and make art, right? The two are not, uh, but at the very least we're going to be able to, to live. Right. And so some, I have heard from others that there is an idea that, uh, if you're come up in the theater, theater artists never plan for what success could look like. Uh, whereas f- film artists, or like if you're going to go be a banker or wh- a regular job, um, you plan to be successful in that. And what does that look like? This is not true for everybody, but but just an idea that um, in any industry, if you find yourself in the mentality of you haven't imagined going into it, what does this look like if it's really successful? Um, if you haven't defined that for yourself, uh, if you haven't kind of imagined it, uh, I wonder how you will get there, right? So 
give yourself permission to pursue things creatively um, that will, that could be really successful. Uh, it also helps you connect, I think, connect to an audience more. If you're trying to make something that's going to be successful, then you naturally have to think about the other people. You, you have to think about, um, who am I making this for? Right? Uh, you have to think about who am I making this for? What do they want? What would they like to see out of this? And it takes, it, it makes it, um, simultaneously more helpful to you and I think a little uh, not selfless but I think it's always good to think about who you're making stuff for right who are you making something for um, and how can you make that thing for someone else the best it can be and I think down that road might be success and if you get there that's okay. That doesn't make your art bad. <laughs> um, there are lots of other things that can make your art bad. <laughs> it doesn't necessarily make your art good either, but um, thinking about how a project can be successful might automatically make you engage a lot of things needed to think about a project from an audience member's point of view and to align what you're making with your attempt to connect to them. That sounds pretty good. That sounds like sharing. That sounds like giving. That sounds like a, a virtuous circle. And if they want to pay you a ton of money for it, take it. Because then you can go make other stuff for the rest of your life, right? Um, there's no nobility in staying broke. If anything, it robs the world of what you could create because you don't have the resources to make it. It's not easy. I don't have like, this is not an advice show. Um, but the question that was posed was, how do I get out of the starving artist mindset? And my thought is, you have to believe that you deserve it. Now, how do you actually do it? Like, you know, getting, getting jobs, getting, you know, sources of income, that kind of stuff. Everyone's so different. That's that's whatever's going on in your world. Um, if you have friends that are great at finding work, whatever kind of work, if you have friends that are great at managing money, you should learn from them, my opinion. Um, anyone, again, who is on a road that you would rather be on, talk to them. Ask them. What do they do? Um, that's, that's what I would do. Um, but I won't belittle or pretend for a second that it's not all incredibly hard. People have loans, people have debt, people have all kinds of circumstances. But in the context of the starving artist as a romantic idea, that just needs to die. <laughs> I, artists shouldn't starve. Nobody should starve. It's not romantic. It's disappointing. Um, yeah, so that's my two cents. You deserve to be successful. And if you have a path to that, you should take it. Uh, and if that, what, if that gives you the resources to keep making your art, then you should do that. All right, that's it. That's it. That's a surprise Sunday stream. So I'll uh, see you next time.